Welcome back to the World Nines Tournament here in Fiji, and we are at the business end of proceedings. Two great semi-finals have set up a tremendous final. Two combatants, Papua New Guinea, about to take on New Zealand. Both teams have played great football to move through to this stage of the competition. And we now go to the highlights of our cup final, the Kumuls up against the Kiwis. It will be interesting to see which team does settle the best in this game. Imagine the Papua New Guinea side will be fairly nervous. They would have played in many finals. There's Nigel Vagana, a ball out in front of Sean Hoppy, throws the dummy, steps back inside, and that's a great run. He had no room to move, and he still found an extra 10 metres. Robert Taylor came up with a tackle, six on six. As now Henry Paul stepped off the left, lofted his footing there, and then was able to wrong foot the defence coming up in Wesley. Would have been a big collision if Wesley got the little bloke Henry Paul Namu some quick hands. Iro looks to pass over the top, holds it up. As Co got in there to make the tackle. Last for the Kiwis, but they're only 10 metres out from the line. Quick hand from Vagana, and the captain, Sean Hoppy, scores for New Zealand. Namu, Vagana, then Hoppy, and New Zealand start just the way they wanted. 4-0, the first set of six. We've seen, seen Sean Hoppy score plenty of tries in this tournament. I don't think this is one that should have occurred. It was three on three. You watch the winger for Papua New Guinea come flying in there. The number five, James Copps, was not needed. New Zealand leading by six points to nil. This is the cup final. The World Nines. Here at the National Stadium in Fiji. Lovely ball to CEO. Even better ball back inside to Tila. Then on the outside to James Copps. You'll cop that every time. Great try from Papua New Guinea. James Cop scores. And I'll make an amend. An amend I will amend what I said at the start of the match. The support is definitely with Papua New Guinea. Yes, I'm going to agree with that. The crowd's erupted as one as James Copps was put away. By a very good play there from the number six, Robert Tila. Again, I think it was a mistake made by the winger. Nigel Baganan did not need to come in. Converse attempt from in front of this try here was unsuccessful in the meantime it's new zealand on the attack inside the png quarter they lead by two points tony iro picks up a man on the outside to tupu just 12 meters out from the line they had a chance to go the blind side now it's headed there quick hands from namu they should score hoppy on the left wing this time well what a player he is that's five tries for the tournament to the New Zealand captain. Right wing, left wing, play him anywhere. He's a great finisher. Yeah, he's my player of the tournament, Sean Hoppy, the New Zealand captain. Very close to half time. He's extended the lead. Coming back in field. Plenty of determination. Plants the ball down. So New Zealand 10 lead Papua New Guinea 4 cup final here in Suva. With some work to do. Down by six points, New Zealand 10, Papua New Guinea 4. And they really do need to score first in the second half. And Mamando cleaned up over the top of the tackle. Yes, that try just before half time was a real blow to PNG's chances as David Wesley gets into space. Oh, look at them go, Stanley Jean. Is it Stanley who's sprinting away or is it Kipsy? In any case, they can run the hundred in about 10 seconds flat. What a remarkable try, Wesley setting it up. Boy, you can explode on the line like that. Well, it's good night. Papua New Guinea strike within 30 seconds. Yes, I think you'll find it is Stanley Jean sliding up on the outside of a strong charge from David Wesley. Through one tackle, in behind the defensive line. Stacey Jones came up with the tackle and then the head went back. A despairing dive from Tafai. That was to no avail. And Stanley Jean starts off the second half beautifully. And it's continued on by his captain, Elias Payo. He converts the try. They 10 points all in the early seconds of the second half. As now Gavin Hill goes to the line, puts the ball under the arm, spins out of tackles. That's a great run. Might even get him get, see him get to the line. He's got five people hanging off him. Oh, what about that? Gavin Hill's still going. Now, make sure to play the ball. An amazing run. Well, they just have to score here, don't they? Wiki, quick hands. Paul, then away, they do the right thing, Barnett scores in the corner. Well, if the only bright news for Papua New Guinea is they're forced to try wide, but New Zealand had to score and they did. And if Richard Barnett gets his name down for that try, he must go across and thank Gavin Hill because it was Hill's run, the previous play, which set things up. He went straight through the meat of the New Guinea defence. We've got CO hanging off him, hanging off him. we've got a cool There'll be another couple of players. The number seven, Stanley Jean, is there. In comes Mamando. 
and they still have him hanging over the try line at the end of the run. There are five defenders there, which means there can't be too many out wide. And there's none in front of Richard Barnett as he puts his side in front. Jones in a dummy half. 14-10 the score, a little over two minutes remaining as Carter stands in the tackle, elects not to pass, and it was a good tackle from Mamando, who's been just about the best of the big men, or the forward players in the Papua New Guinea side. There's some quick hands. Ruben Wicky extends now. Will he need Kerwin? He picks up Kerwin. This could be the cup final. CO chases, doesn't stop him. Kerwin scores for the Kiwis. And I do think the cup title is going the way of New Zealand. A little doubt about that. And the one thing that New Zealand have done very well throughout this tournament is take advantage of the overlaps they create. This was a four-on-two situation on the left-hand side. Tony Iro, a good ball to Ruben Wickey. Wickey threw the dummy. Came to the last person in defence, which was Robert Seo and John Kerwin. Plenty of determination on his face. Robert Seo, the diving attempt. And John Kerwin wraps up the cup final for the New Zealanders. And now New Zealand, can they rub a bit of salt into the wound as that's flicked on nicely from Barnett. They're away again. Hoppy back to Barnett. Through a line ball past to Namu. The referee says play on. And they put the icing on the cake. Gene Namu scores for the Kiwis. If it wasn't over before, it certainly is now. Well, we saw Sean Hoppy in the first half bob up on the other side of the field of where he scored his first try. Have a look at this work from Richard Barnett. Beautiful stuff onto his captain. Stays alive on the inside. This is a pass that is a little bit suspect, but I think it's OK. Gene Namu taking advantage of that. And that does wrap things up. It's been a valiant effort from the Papua New Guineans, but the Kiwis, they did the tough work. They got rid of the Aussies in the semi. Now they've taken out the final. So full time and the arms raised. Gene Namu. The Kiwis win it by 26 points to 10. It was a lot tighter than that. Certainly the last two and a half minutes changed that scoreline greatly. But there's no doubt about it. The Kiwis have been the best side at this tournament. And I'll say by quite a margin, certainly their defensive effort well above other teams. New Zealand 26, Papua New Guinea 10. They're the cup champions. And that brings to an end our coverage of the inaugural World Nines Rugby League Championship from Fiji. Worthy winners, New Zealand, 26 points to 10 in the final. We'd like to take, thank TV3 New Zealand for their pictures throughout our telecast. We'd like to thank you for joining us from Fiji. It's bye for now.